In past years, I've always started my seeds on a growing rack in my garage. Last year, I planned poorly. I added onto the garden, had great plans for a lot of different crops, and uh, didn't plan out well the space I would need to start all of those. And that caused me some issues. I ran out of space, got something started late. I never had a pepper crop last year because I got my pepper plant started so late. So I need more space. And rather than put more racks in the garage, I'd really like to have a greenhouse that I could start seeds in and, and get plants going in. So I was shopping around for an economical greenhouse. For right now, I'm just looking for something that will last me for the next couple years and then possibly replace that with something more permanent. I did look into building something on my own, um, basically making a hoop house out of cattle panels and putting plastic over that. But what I ended up going with was a low cost tunnel house. Um, it is foreign made, uh, but a uh, product from company called Quick Tent. I do want to mention that this is not a sponsored video. Quick Tent did not send me this. This was paid for with my own money. Uh, I believe the price I paid with discounts was about $120 to $130. The assembly manual for the greenhouse is pretty basic, labeled user's manual, and it's made for all different si models and sizes of this tunnel type greenhouse. And so we look inside, there's multiple pages as you can see, but part of it is just pictures showing the different products. They have a uh, little bit of introductory information. Then when we get to the actual assembly instructions, 12 by seven by seven model, and this is it. One page kind of shows you how the pieces go together, gives you a list of the pieces required and then your instructions are assemble the whole frame using all the poles and connectors place the cover tightly over the frame then use the velcro to fix the cover and still frame tightly and reinforce the greenhouse with bases stakes and ropes that's pretty much all there is to the instruction manual and you know what i kind of like that i uh i don't like having to page through instruction manuals looking for every single step. I can look at this in the piece list and kind of figure out where things go. So I don't really mind this at all, but uh, for someone who wants a step-by-step -step specification of where to start and how to get things put together, this may seem a little inadequate. Now the box they sent this in was mislabeled 20 by 10 by six, well, six foot six inches, I guess. They put 6.6, .6, but I believe that's what they meant, and that is incorrect. I confirmed with the quick tent people that that is the incorrect size. This is actually the 12 by 7. Now the cover that this greenhouse uses, it's a plastic cover. It's got this green webbing in it. Um, it did come in a, I, I guess, white or clear. It really is a fairly heavy duty, uh, probably a little better than than what I would have gotten had I gone to the hardware store and gotten a sheet of plastic. I'm going to be mounting this to a four by four frame on the bottom. And I would have built that first, except the instructions aren't real clear about the exact dimensions of this. It's 12 by, what, 12 by seven, but is that 12 to the center of each post, to the outside of the post bases, or to the inside of the post bases? And how close are they, uh, really? When they say 12 feet, are they saying, you know, is it really 11 and a half? So what I'm going to do is assemble this, and then I'll build my base to screw this to. Otherwise, the only real way to secure this to the ground is with some anchors that they provided. These are the anchors they provide to attach this to the ground. These are basically like cheap tent pegs that would come with a tent. And uh, so if we get a stiff wind, I don't think that's going to hold up very well. It looks like the assembly will be pretty simple. It just uses these spring-loaded uh, push buttons uh, to attach the pieces to each other, which isn't the strongest way to go about it, but it is a quick way for assembly. And I think once we get the cover over top of it and get it all anchored down, it'll probably hold pretty well. I ran into my first problem already. Got this one button 
that is stuck inside of there. So I'm gonna have to get a screwdriver and jimmy with that and try to get it straightened out. And once I took the screwdriver and just pried from the inside just a tiny bit, it popped right back out. So we're good to go. Some of these parts don't fit together real well. It's like they got a thick coat of paint on one and it doesn't want to slide all the way in, but we got it. It's also because of this little, the way these buttons latch together, they have a little bit of a pl play to them. It's not real precise, but uh, that I guess will help us true things up in the end. I do want to point out that uh, not just by the way they're shaped, but they are labeled with little stickers so that uh, you can tell which parts are supposed to match up to the diagram. So that's a little helpful, I suppose. And this is where assembling this would probably go easier if you had a couple people. As I was looking at low cost greenhouses, the reason I chose the uh, Quick Tint is that they had excellent reviews about their customer service. Now you can make of it what you will. The fact that people needed to contact customer service in the first place could be problematic, but some people reported that there were parts missing or different issues with their tents and quick tent was very quick to respond and uh, correct the issues so i will give that to the company i have had to try that out myself like i mentioned the packing box was mislabeled and they were very quick to respond to clarify that so far that's been my only experience with their customer service but that was one thing is if you know not that i'm too keen on buying a cheap product that may not last a long time anyway but uh, if i am it's kind of surprising and kind of nice to know that the company stands behind it I will say that the tube frame on this is not the biggest. It's, uh, it probably says in the manual, I'm not sure, but it's probably about maybe three quarter, five eighths to three quarter in diameter. And uh, so it's not the sturdiest tube frame. And, you know, I said a few things about these push button, the, the way the pieces snap together, and there's a little bit of play to them. But once you get all the pieces together, it really, <laughs> holds up pretty well, makes a pretty good frame. Uh, so now what I'm gonna do is uh, get a measurement. If I can kind of check and see that these sides are somewhat plumb, then that should give me the truest measurement between the sides. Our legs are pretty vertical there. Here's another two person job is trying to hold that tape on the curved post. All right, so we are we're right at 70 and a half inches. That would be center to center. So from the outside of that post to the inside of this post is about 70 and a half inches, which is not even six feet. Let's see what our length is on this. You say it's 12 feet long. From end to end, it is 11 feet, four and a quarter inches or 136 inches, so uh, not quite 12 feet there, not quite seven feet that way. So the dimensions are a little bit overstated, but uh, that's okay, it's, it's workable. It'll still give enough space in here. I can put racks along the sides for starting seeds. So I'm happy with that. These four by four posts that I'm using are pressure treated for ground contact, it's called cedar tone, so they kind of have the red look of cedar. They're three and a half inches, <laughs> they're three and a half inches wide. And so for my cross pieces, which are going to go inside of the outer pieces, um, I'm going to take my distance, center to center on those poles, 
and I'm going to subtract three and a half inches. And uh, so that should put the poles right in the middle of those outer pieces. On my end pieces, which are currently 12 feet long, I'm going to uh, take my measurement of my distance and I'm going to add three inches to give a little extra space so that the bases on my end posts will have enough wood there for me to put screws in. If this were going to be my long-term greenhouse solution, which like I said, I'm expecting this to last me a couple of years and then I'll put in a permanent solution, then I would put down a gravel base to level this frame on and, and set it up in a more permanent way. But uh, doing it this way, I can kind of try out the location, make sure it works for me, make sure it's not putting too much shade on anything. And uh, then in the future, when I do put in a more permanent greenhouse solution, then I can go with a more permanent base. To save myself a little time, I'm actually using self-drilling sheet metal screws. Because of these bars, it's a little hard for me to get straight on these screws. And my screwdriver tip is just a little smaller than the, uh, the screw head, but once it bites, it goes in okay. So now the only thing left is to get this top on. So let's see what kind of a trick that is. I think this is one of those things they call a two-person job. So I just wanted to show what it looks like once we get the cover on, coming inside. It's a fairly small space and like I said, it's advertised as 12 by 7. I already discussed what the actual dimensions were and a little smaller than that, but it'll still give much more space than my uh, rack that I have in the garage. So uh, on the inside, once we got it together, um, Get it on it has velcro strips to uh secure it to the bars and uh it was kind of weird these long strips just kind of overlapping them and then i realized that the strips are long enough you can actually double them around and secure them twice so uh i'll probably be going around and doing that to secure all of these i think it'll do the trick uh, it seems to let in pretty good light it's kind of cloudy today but it's still just about as bright in here as it is outside uh, like I said, I'm not sure how long this plastic cover will last, but uh, it seems to be fairly sturdy. Uh, it's got the reinforcement in there, so hopefully it just won't break down uh, too much too fast. I mentioned I'm hoping to get about two years out of this, and uh, hopefully that will be the case. One other thing I want to mention to Quick Tent's credit is that uh, they have... On their website a page that shows different ways that people have secured their greenhouses and, and high tunnels like this so some people who have had the larger uh, tunnel houses have 
built frames inside to help secure it a little more than uh, the frame that's provided. And after I bought this, they actually sent an email to me saying, here's a link to uh, show how um, our high tunnel or our greenhouses can be made uh, more sturdy. So for the price I paid, uh, I think it's a fairly decent looking product. We'll see how it works out. We'll see how it holds up. So I hope this has been useful for you. If it has, I appreciate if you click on the like button. If you like this video, then you might like this other video that Google has selected for you. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you next time.